Good morning, folks. We've got a lot of stories to cover today. Space weather, deadly lightning, Jupiter, and more. We are starting with our star, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com. Primary story is the coronal hole. We do indeed expect the magnetic connection to it tonight. It begins the earthquake warning peak, and its solar wind will arrive at Earth early next week. Plasma filaments continue their activity as well, this one riding high above the photosphere here incoming on the eastern limb. Got the solar wind up top, magnetometer and KP index bottom left and right respectively. Cosmic ray spikes continue in the solar wind telemetry. Those do break out in the atmosphere and don't affect the Earth's field, and neither does that ambient stream when it is this calm. We're going to Poland where a tremendous storm ripped through, killing four, injuring dozens more. And that official toll is the only reason I'm taking this photo seriously. It looks wholly unreal. Can't even tell if those are sub bolts around it or a surrounding field that we just see the outside boundaries of. But either way, played around and found no signs of tampering or Photoshop. It's a real photo and a once in a lifetime shot of lightning. Those in Taiwan, do not go outside and try to get pictures of what's coming. As our app alert stated last night, this is the highest possible storm alert as the approach and turn is forecast to occur as the eye wall makes landfall, then going to charge westward towards China and down to Hong Kong. Let's go to Jupiter next. Hubble and Alma teamed up to catalog an explosion of storms in the southern belt. It's visible as obvious white clouds lifting up high in visible light, and it is a dark spot in radio. Interestingly, they show how the storms likely work with very similar activity to cumulonimbus clouds here on Earth, including lightning and the anvil shape expansion at the higher boundary layers. Interesting article out of Stanford next describing ultra-slow quakes. These not only can lead up to larger ones, but they're largely a mystery in how they occur. Today we are a step closer to learning how porous nature of rocks plays a big role when the slow slips happen there. And they also note how these slow slips in Antarctica are never felt when they hit the ice, but they happen twice a day and are the equivalent of a magnitude 7 earthquake. Article linked below. Bit of shocking news out of South Africa. Nearly half of all extinct plant species from biodiversity hotspots come from there. They say agriculture is the number one reason, followed by urbanization. But regardless of the cause, those are gargantuan totals for one country to put up there. Speaking of putting up, how about a submarine volcano putting up pumice rafts near Tonga? We just mentioned porous rock too, didn't we? And pumice is some of the most porous there is. Traps lots of air and tends to float well. This pumice raft is larger than Manhattan. A quick word on today's burgeoning researchers. Lots of solid ones out there, but there are also a ton of sissified, got a trophy just for playing when they were kids, were told every day they were special sort of young adults that can't handle the real world. Sometimes bullying is real, and other times the people saying they got bullied are pathetic. In this case, if they can't handle criticism and the pressure to publish and actually do work product that was requested of them, perhaps they should find another career. I have no patience or empathy for those who walk into the top stadiums and then complain at the size of the bull they have to fight. Last but not least, we've got lab results claiming to recreate the merger of two neutron stars. Couple things. No, they did not create something 800 billion degrees. That's how they scaled up their extrapolations. But also, neutron stars have some major problems. There is much assumed, much guessed, and still, much they claim they don't know about them. Topping it off, the Hades experiment is in the running for worst named science experiments in history, so I do guess that is something. Folks, if you're coming to Observing the Frontier 2020, and so far that's about 150 of you with more than 11 months to go, I highly recommend you book your room early. Their discounted block won't last. It is a great deal for being in the Denver Tech Center. No need to enter codes. This is our group's booking site linked below with the dates pre-filled in there for next year. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.